Hi, this is Ken Schneider, assistant coach for Regina Pats, and this is the WHL Pats Cast. Stamps will get it back inside the loose jaw zone. Temple in on the court check, gets the puck first. Back of the goal, nice move, sends it in front, they score! Zach Shin, great left behind the Moose John net by Cole Temple to find Zachary Shin. Right side, Moose Javansky smacks the puck in around the Warriors' board. Played back of the net by Ungary, lost it, wrapped it around, scores! Braxton Whitehead on the takeaway back of the Moose John net. Kovacevic takes the care and brings it out to center. In over to the tunnel line, two on one. Centers it in front, Sherman, back in a great save, rebound, and another great save by Huey. He robbed Lucas Brenton as he robbed Kovacevic and Sherman in front. And it... Temple a stretch pass for Roman. In on Zibrick, makes a move to the outside. Now Kuntz centers it in front. Kuzma to Shantz, he scores! First career multi-goal game for Zachary Shant. And Cameron Kuzma picks up his first career point here in the Western Hockey League. He's gotta grab that puck. Welcome to PassCast, the unofficial the Giant Pass podcast. It's March 8th. Episode 168. It's Chris here, Kevin there. How are we doing tonight, Kev? Eh, not too bad. Unfortunate uh, loss in the jaw tonight, but overall, glad to see them back in the province. Get to see some hockey here pretty soon, finally. Yeah, definitely. I know I kind of talked about maybe going to this game, but uh, Friday night. I mean, if it was Saturday night, yeah, for sure. But Friday night's tough for me. Get home from work and then have to rush out there. But Would have filled some of the empty red seats in the oh. place. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the attendance said thirty-seven eighty-nine. I think that was empty seats they counted. Yeah, I don't like, know what I don't know how they count their t- their numbers, but it was a lot of red. I feel uh, so bad for them. Like they're a good team. Yeah, that place should be sold out, or at least close to being yeah, sold out every game. Like, full. come on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it holds forty-five, and there was no way it was thirty-seven of forty-five. Like, not even yeah. close. Like, a, yeah, like there was 15. a fifteen hundred people. There was yeah. a fifteen hundred people on the concourse. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right, like, whatever. So that place, that place should be close to being sold out. Like, they're a, they're a, they're a good team. They, yeah, pretty much sold out their their team to get to where they are. Like, come on. Yeah, definitely. Show up. <laughs> I know that'd be, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see. But well, I think... even if you go back to the sixteen seventeen season when the Pats were away and they had sellouts, but the place was never like full full. Yeah, people buy the tickets, or the corporations or businesses buy them, and. Mm-hmm. give the tickets away no one shows up so but it was never that bad <laughs> well even 17 18 uh i know moose show wasn't that full until the playoffs yeah like that's true i know matt and i we went out to uh the swift current moose jaw a game or two of those and it was tough to get a ticket but i mean yeah i don't remember it being super full during the regular season there no no but yeah the, but, the past 16 17 season they, they sold out or were close to sell out pretty much every game and there was there was hardly ever that many empty seats. Yeah, but no, for sure they should they should have more people. Come on, go support your Warriors. Yeah. Boo! Kevin just said that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you gotta support your team. Like, come on. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, especially community team, right? Like no exactly big, no big backer, right? They need exactly they need all the all the fans they can get. So they sh- they should have a. A decent playoff run here, so see how it goes. But I mean, on the ice, yeah, the Pats struggled. I mean, it wasn't too surprising at all. Um, you know, I I don't know what the team's mindset is after coming off that trip. Um, probably not great. Not especially great to go into Mustra. Yeah, right. With five five road wins on the season total. Yeah, going into Mustra. Yeah. And then Moose Jaw's coming off a, a six and zero road trip, the total opposite of the Pats. Same teams, everything. So exactly, they're, they're flying high, and uh, and the Pats officially eliminated from the playoffs. That that doesn't help either. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, it wasn't the worst game. Seen no, worst it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't terrible. It just yeah. wasn't good. Yeah, no. I mean, you get that first goal. It's nice to see. Um. Right off the hop. Temple. I mean, it seems like the young guys got a little more run tonight, uh, which is nice to see. Temple made a nice little play behind the net, you know. 
and and found chance and he scores he scores two tonight nice to see that yes yeah, first career double digit goal game um but yeah i think qa double QA's, digit what did i say double digit yeah two goal game multi-goal game yeah. <laughs> multi-goal game oh man it's getting it's late. late it's, it's late. getting late <laughs> yeah but we're getting this out on a friday night i mean there's nothing else this weekend for the pats obviously so getting this yeah, done they get, a, they get a whole week off before another week month. off yeah so but coming up we got a, a great interview with ken schneider it's a little longer so we thought i uh, fit in nicely with this short episode this week so but yeah i mean i don't know there's not much to say about this game is there really right oh like, the, the, the pats got the momentum they got their goal early and then 30 seconds later yeah savoy snipes hi it's like oh it's yeah that's it as soon as that happened, I was like, "Ah, oh. yeah." And then Sherman scored. And then the 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 kind of I don't know if it was the backbreaker, but a real tough one was that one with forty five seconds to go in the period and off Whitehead's leg. And yeah, the, the one that caromed off with like three different things, and then yeah, it's like, oh, it was going wide, and then it hits Whitehead in the leg, and it's just like, oh man, again, <laughs> again, yeah, just like the, the, it happens they need- to the Pats all the time i know they need all the bounces they can get just to even have a chance right and the bounces seem to go the other way all the time i guess that's what happens when you're not not winning a lot yeah you're not the best team right tends to happen (laughs) yeah that's yeah and then uh then they open up the scoring in the second period mustra does on a on a power play i didn't see the hit it seemed pretty it sounded like you thought it was kind of weak a weak call yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, it is what it, it, is. Is what it is. There's maybe some questionable calls in this game. Um, questionable non-calls? Or non-calls or decisions on calls. <laughs> um, yes. If you want to get to that right away, but... Whatever. Yeah, we'll, like... We'll, 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 talk about the, we'll talk about the Whitehead goal first because that'll, that'll end the scoring in the second period there. Yeah, he gets nice a gift. Nice gift by Unger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did he yeah. forget there was a player coming at him or what? I don't yeah, know what happened. Well, he kind of fanned on it or something. I don't know. He just you don't just, see that very often, but it, it's it's funny when it happens. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, there's a whisper of hope early in the second. It's four two, but <sighs> Pats really didn't have much. I mean, apparently they had eleven shots in the first. I don't think that's right. I uh, yeah, I don't know who was doing the shots, but. When the Pats scored, it was their first shot on goal, I think. But Dante's like, yeah, it was the third shot of the game. Yeah, third even he said that. They say it was like, the third shot of the game or whatever. It's yeah, like, he what? was like, I don't think the first two were shots, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. But then it got it ahead in the second. It's 23 to 8 shots for who's shots. Like, yeah. Oh. They're good. Yes, they're good. Yeah, they look pretty good for sure. Um, yeah, and then the third period rolls around and a couple more goals. And then Chance gets gets an, another one off a, another nice play by Kuzma. A nice little pass, little pass. Yeah, to Alman congratulations Kuzma. to the to the boy for his first point. Yeah, no, that was nice to see. Um, but yeah, it seemed like the the young guys got a little more run tonight, which was good. Like I said, and, and hopefully they get get a little more confidence. I mean, it's tough when you're playing Moose Jaw. You got Moose Jaw a couple more times yet. Yes, in these <laughs> last five. Yes. <laughs> So that's gonna be tough, but well, there might be there might be a little bit of payback because of uh, the yeah. over celebration by uh, by that young lack of a kid. Yeah, uh, that was Sc- interesting. Scores the six two goal and then he celebrates. What bubble on the end of the stick? And like pretended to take, take a selfie as he was skating down the whole rink. And yeah, it was unbelievable. I, I if if I go back. In, in my heart of hearts back in the, the old era, like uh, the Brent Parker, Sean O'Connor, that era, there would have been blood. <laughs> there would have been a there would have been a, a bench brawl. There would have Not been just a line brawl, a been, bench brawl. There would have been blood, hundred percent. Like like the uh, yeah. When you're when you, you score the six two goal and you celebrate like that, yeah. I'm sorry, but you don't do that. Yeah. So, like, you scored this it was a seventeenth goal of the season. You don't do that. No. Like it's not like it's your first goal. It's like, hey, I scored my first goal. I'm going to celebrate. It was just like, yeah, just too much. Too yeah, six two. You just, yeah, you, whatever. Fist bumps. Just skate away, right? Like, exactly. 
Yeah, as even even in the hockey I was playing last night, some guy was celebrating a goal. Like, it's like it's just pickup. Like, I just I'm just playing pickup at the moment, and he's like celebrating. I was like, dude, like we were getting our side was getting whipped, <laughs> and he's like celebrating a goal. I'm just like, what are you doing? But hey, yeah. whatever. It is what it is. Um, another but, thing from the game was the the the, the two minute checking from behind call on the Mushimansky hit. Yeah, uh, that that oh, okay. Maybe he did turn a little bit. I yeah. don't know. Like, it, but he got cranked. Yeah. And the guy got two minutes. Yeah. And then Corbin Vaughn, of course, challenges him. Decent scrap. He gets two. No power play. Yeah. yeah. It's you, you. Yeah, that's not good. It was. It was kind of like the Wilson hit in Seattle. Like yeah, Mushermansky. Yeah, he started to turn, so it is what it is. But he got hit pretty hard. Um, so we've been seeing these hits called as five minutes, and all of a sudden it's two minutes tonight, right? Like yes. yeah, okay, Vaughn gets two for instigating. That's fine. But yeah, I don't know. We've seen a lot of these five minute majors. He, uh, it was on sports my conduct, not instigator. Okay, what? Well, yeah. But he got it was ten weird that they as both well. got tens. Both of them got I tens. I know, right? So okay, it's so it's unsportsmanlike. Like I thought it was I think that's is that though, is that instigator? Is that what they call it now in sportsmanlike? No, there's still no. an instigator. Okay. All right. So I, yeah, I wonder why Brenton got ten as well then. That's that's kinda odd. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't break up quick enough or something for Troy Murray's liking. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was uh, whatever. It is what it is. Good yeah. to see Mushimaski back later in the game. Yeah, he kind of got up and he, he 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 skated off under his own power and he went to the room and then he came back. So yeah, that was good to see. It was kind of funny. Dante wasn't too sure about that. Going back to that celebration, Dante wasn't too sure about what was going on. <laughs> yeah. Us old guys had to tell the young guy what kind of celebration that was. Yeah, as soon as, as, soon as he started describing it, I'm like. Thought it's a it's a selfie, selfie, selfie stick. stick celebration, yeah. and he gave me a shout out on the air. It was, it yeah. was just, it was just funny. <laughs> but yeah, oh, yeah, laugh so. about something, right? Yeah, just gotta you gotta laugh, right? Exactly. Just gotta laugh. So, I mean, Huey. I mean, he, yeah, he gave up six, but I mean, he played pretty well tonight. Yeah, I you can't really blame him for any no. of the goals. I don't think. No, not at all. Like that one, that's first Savoy shot. Like, man, that went Ten, short side. Double goals again. Like how? Like man, yeah. he snuck that in, and like the wraparound, and then yeah. whatever else, and yeah, no. Uh, yeah, so that's that. I guess I don't know if there's much else you want to talk about in that game or point out anybody. Not much about the game, other than what we've already discussed. But uh, yeah. I'm glad it's over. I'm glad they're back in Saskatchewan. I can't wait for next Friday. <laughs> yeah, finally back in the rink. It's been a while. It's almost a month, right? Yeah. Uh, the 19th of February to the 15th of March. Yeah, it'll be pretty pretty much a month. Yeah. Um, yeah, so PA. PA is in on Friday and then Moose Jaw on the Sunday afternoon. Um, yeah, I mean, just playing out the string here. PA is kind of battling for uh, positioning. Um, I don't know where they're at right now. Let's see. Where's... Let's go. Let's refresh this. PA's up into seventh. They're actually where they're tied with Lethbridge at 63 points. So um, kind of battling there. And then, yeah, like I said, Moosejaw. Moosejaw's locked into two. Medicine Hat will get all Medicine Hat, Swift Current. Swift Current's not too far behind Medicine Hat. Yeah, three points. Yeah, Medicine Hat's three, four, two, and one in the last 10, and Swift Current's eight and two. So Swift Current can catch Medicine Hat here for two for the second spot. Yeah, for sure. There's That one's, that one's still grabs. a ways to go. Yeah. yeah, and then you got Red Deer two points behind Swift Current as well. So. Yeah. It's a tight kind of race for that uh, number two spot because you kind of want that. For sure. Um, yeah, so, I mean, PA, they're obviously battling for seventh, eighth, stay out of that eighth spot. 
I mean, hopefully, maybe the Pats could play spoiler. Maybe, hopefully, possibly. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, and then you got Moose on Sunday, so it's going to be another tough one. At least you're at home. Pats obviously yeah. play better at home. 100% better at home. <laughs> so it should be a more competitive game, I think, compared to tonight. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe by then. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I Hard to know. say. But uh, I don't know. What else you got? Um, From the game, not much. Uh, Jordan Eberle re-signed with the, the Kraken for two more years. Yeah. And... He's playing his, what, 999th game, you said, tonight? Yeah. Uh, flipped it on after the Pats game. They they showed the graphic, 999 for Eberle. Um, and then you pointed out there's three Pats playing for Seattle now. Yeah, Kale Fleury got the recall. So now they got Fleury, Evans, and Eberle playing. Well, I don't think Fleury's playing tonight, but yeah, three three Pats yeah. on the roster. That's crazy. Evans, <laughs> Evans playing, is playing tonight. He's played 17 games this season. Five assists, I think it said. So not too bad. It's crazy. Three three pats on one team. Yeah. Um, and then Everly, like a thousand games already. Like <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's that's wild. But he's been around for a while now, right? So Yeah, it's it's, it's literally unbelievable. It's, he's um, not a young he's not a young person anymore. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. We all remember him here when he was he's young. 30, he's 33. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holy smoke, says Dante, would say. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else What else to say. Um, just kind of watch these playoff races. A little bit it was of, weird seeing the Pats bench so short. When I when they when they put the lineup out, I was like, 11 forwards, six defensemen. Holy smokes, what's oh, going yeah. on?" Um, yeah. Well, the weekly report came out, and Aremba uh, was week to week. Was Barnett week to, or um day to day? Sorry, was Barnett day to day on it too? I, I don't, can't remember. I don't recall that, but I remember seeing Aremba being day to day, and I was like, "Oh, that's kind of odd," but uh, whatever, day to day. He'll. I didn't even think of him not playing. Yeah, right. day to day with the with the weekly report is one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know. Yeah, Barnett's not mentioned at all, so I don't know what what was up there. So yeah, they end up. Yeah, Kuzma played, um, like I said, and they still were short a, a forward. Yeah, it was weird. Like the the Blazers, they're done their first round. They could have they could have brought somebody in, one with seven D or brought in Zacharias had Smith on D or Zacharias or whatever. Yeah, or uh, Deschamps, bring them in for the game. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. That's interesting. Um, Jackson Vaughn will be back next game. Tonight yeah. was his last game of his suspension. Yeah. So he'll be back next week for sure. That'll be good. Another crash and banger. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess kind of the, the new story of the week of expats is Bedard and the whole card craze. <laughs> going wild people just going wild for his uh his rookie cards and the prices are astronomical and they they like what doubled in a week the prices of the the the, the boxes or whatever i don't i don't don't collect cards anymore i stopped collecting in the 90s so yeah i don't know well the the first series that came out at the start of the year it it, the price from that box to this box over doubled (laughs) it went from (laughs) 150 to 330 locally Ooh. and then uh sounds like the next kind of run of boxes from a certain retailer are going to be even more than that in town so it's kind of like Ooh. man that's crazy that's wild Holy smokes so the ex-co-host matt and i we were able to get a, a box each out of bc for uh a hundred a hundred dollars less than locally with free shipping oh yeah so, so we shot now well We'll crack a box here and, and see see what we get. So, but uh, yeah, it's kind of wild. In the internet. like, I looked Wednesday night. I bet you there was over a thousand cards on eBay. Oh, under under Bedard alone that were still listed. So who knows how many sold? Right? It's just like you, you go on eBay, you look at Pat stuff. Like I, I used know. to look on there for programs, old programs yeah. and jerseys. Yeah. It's just stuff to it's look just at. Bedard. It's Connor Bedard 
Everything, yeah. And maybe it'll, maybe the odd ten or how program of excellence cards or whatever like that, but yeah. it's it's like ninety seven percent. Okay, well ninety eight percent. Ninety eight percent. It's badar, 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 yeah. badar everywhere. I know. Every like you even try to filter the lowest to highest, it's like, oh, Bedard starts at zero, or whatever. I know, <laughs> like, right? I know. Or people just or whatever it is, trying like, to make oh. a buck, right? Like, it's just thousands and thousands and thousands of Bedard things out there. It's just crazy. Yeah, it is wild. Even locally, like you look at marketplace and garage sale and stuff. They're autograph posters, five hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, hundred and fifty bucks. Ninetieth anniversary jersey with Bedard on it. I didn't know he played. <laughs> 15 years ago exactly it's like what i know just wild just weird stuff and people i guess people are buying it so uh, yeah if, if people are willing to buy it people are willing to buy it i guess yeah might as well put it up might as well sell it if you can yeah yeah it's interesting but yeah anyways we should probably get out of here uh listen to ken schneider that's a, it's a really good interview coming it was up. fun it was fun it was good i got yeah. a few got a few little tidbits before the interview so we we kind of knew a few different places to ask questions and stuff so it was it yeah. turned out really awesome he's really really nice guy yeah i haven't really chatted with him all season but did a lot of post game stuff with him last year so it was nice um yeah and and like i said he's he's an obviously older gentleman and he's got lots of you know backstory so there's lots of different directions that we went with well, he's, it and, he's literally three times as old as the players so he's got three times as many stories and he's a storyteller so yeah no he's it was great, awesome yeah no so it turned out well so it was the first time i actually introduced myself i I'd said hi to him go on coming and go on or whatever but it was the first time i actually introduced myself so, so it was nice yeah no he seems to be a really great guy so. yes but yeah i guess with that uh we'll listen to that all right, we're pleased to welcome on Ken Schneider, assistant coach of your Regina Pats. Welcome, Ken. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah, so um, just uh, back to the start. Born and raised in near Colfax, Saskatchewan, on the farm, hey? Yeah, I, I was born here in Regina, um, uh, and it was uh, rather interesting. Of course, my family are grain farmers, and my dad drove uh, my mom into, t- into the city and uh, dropped, dropped her off and uh, had to get back to the farm to get the crop in, so two weeks later, he picked us up and brought us back to the farm. <laughs> uh, crazy. So grew up, all you spent all your time there on the farm and then kind of got it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I grew up, uh, I, I've got a younger brother and younger sister. Um, and uh, I went to a two-room school right in Colfax, which is a, a little hamlet that, to be quite honest, that really doesn't exist anymore, which is rather yeah. unfortunate. Uh, it was on a CN railway line and of course when the railway went out there that sort of spelled the end of the of the little community we had but uh, yeah I grew up there went to a two-room school um, my mom taught me grades one and two which were two of the worst years of my life <laughs> and theirs I'm sure <laughs> and uh, yeah I went to grades one to six uh, right right at home a mile away from the school and uh, then gra- when I graduated, moved to uh, junior high in Weyburn. So I did my grade seven, eight, nine at the junior high, and then high school at the Comprehensive in Weyburn. So, you know, when when people ask me, I say I'm from Weyburn often because most people don't know where Colfax is or even heard of it. So, uh, and, and spent the better part of my uh, some of my early junior career hockey career there as well. So, so speaking of your hockey career, where did you start? Did you when you First lease yeah, when you were little. When that's a really good question. So I started in Louvain, Saskatchewan. Uh, Colfax, we, we had a two-sheet uh, curling rink, but we had no hockey arena. Uh, but Louvain, six miles to the west, had a, had a rink. So uh, I, uh, I think I, I was six years old when I first started. So I, was, I wasn't real young like they are today, but... Uh, playing with 10 year olds so we were just to get enough kids together to have a hockey team um, played with a good friend of mine Don McMorris who you know was a politician here in Saskatchewan for many years and him and I were really really good friends uh, uh, growing up and uh, so those were my early years of, of hockey was was right there in Louvain and and then as things progressed I I, I did end up going to Weyburn as a, I think I was uh I was nine when I started playing hockey in Weyburn, um, and I had to play, um, I played house league hockey because they had some rules about not being on a rep team uh, or an all-star team until you 
had spent at least a year in their program. So, um, and some real fond memories of my upbringing there in, in Weyburn. Uh, I played um, at the Tom Thumb tournament here as a 10 year old. Uh, and uh, one of our highlights was that we, we, uh, we, we beat Doug Wickenheiser. I say Doug Wickenheiser because it literally was Doug on his own. Um, <clears throat> and we ended up winning the championship and we, we beat Brandon in the final. And I, I have my trophy here at the rink, the Tom Thumb tournament. It was a big tournament uh, back in my day here in Regina. So uh, yeah, it's a, it seems like an eternity ago to be quite honest. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So growing up, were the Red Wings like the team that you wanted to play for, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that that's absolutely correct, Chris. Uh, I mean, as a kid, uh, going to the games, uh, following the the team, uh, uh, that that was all I ever wanted to be was a Weyburn Red Wing, and I and I got uh, the opportunity. I went to their training camps from about age thirteen on, and by the time I was fifteen, I was hanging in there, and 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 I was at their training camp right to the bitter end. They they get me in the odd exhibition game and. Um, and I just kind of went from there, and then at 16, I, I, I actually made the team. So, uh, yeah, that, that uh, you know how it is, uh, whether you're a Regina Pat uh, or wherever you grow up, you typically idolize the, the junior team. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Did you play any other sports? Absolutely, other yeah, I sure did. Um, uh, I, I loved baseball and, and fastball. So, again, being from a small community, I played a lot of baseball, played junior baseball out of Weyburn. But um, uh, right at home, we had a softball team. And uh, I was 15, and uh, the second baseman was building his house. And so my cousin dragged me out uh, to play some ball, and uh, I ended up playing fastball uh, most of my life. And... Uh, Phil Boris, who my cousin was the one who dragged dragged my tail out and said, "You're going to play ba uh, fastball with us because we need a second baseman," <laughs> and that's kind of how it started. He'd take me into the city because we played in the league in in Weyburn, and uh, so we'd uh, he'd throw me in his car and away we'd go off to the city for a ball game. There's lots of guys I know. There's like the Kelly Chases and stuff like that. They 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 talk about coming back to Saskatchewan in the summer after playing and and. There was I can't remember who all it was. It was like the, the toughest fastball team in Saskatchewan. Like it was all these, you know. Yeah, there was a lot of really great fastball yeah. back in my day, uh, Chris. And uh, Weyburn Canadians used to play in the old Western Canadian Fastball League, which was which was real high level. I didn't play at that level, but as a kid, my dad would take me to uh, Clark Park in Weyburn, and we'd watch um, some of the better players. And they had uh, we, Weyburn had New Zealanders. Uh, Newfoundlanders, uh, so they had players from all over, and uh, they were an extremely good team. In fact, I think they won a Western Canadian Championship one year. So, um, yeah, exciting stuff. Um, high school, I uh, because I was playing junior hockey at 16, I I would have played every sport to be quite honest with you. My parents would have would allowed it, but uh, I uh, I did play high school football, and I absolutely loved it. And we played in the 4A league here, which is now the whatever I think they call it, the 5A league. Um, with all the Regina teams, so it, it, it was a lot of fun. Lost uh, a league title uh, at, at the old Taylor Field, and uh, all of our playoff games were played at Taylor Field. So there was a lot of fun. Had uh, high school for me was really um, it was some of the best time of my life, to be quite honest with you. Um, my mom was a big proponent of, of, of music, and so as a little boy, I took uh, piano lessons. And uh, when I got to junior high, I took up the trumpet and I played. Uh, I played trumpet uh, right from grade seven to twelve. I was in the in the choir um, and loved it. Uh, it really, was a, a good experience. And and you know, I used to get I used to get razzed a lot when I was playing junior hockey. And I used to tell the guys, "Well, guys, uh, you're missing out because I'm in I'm in the choir with all the best looking girls in the high school. So, yeah, good on me and tough on you guys." Why was hockey the sport that you chose to pursue even further? Uh, you know, I, th I think it was just, uh, I just had a real passion for it. And it was um, uh, really encouraged by my mom more than my dad. My dad was a, a baseball player and a curler, and so was my mom was a, a fastball player and a curler. But she had two older brothers uh, uh, in Yellowgrass that, that were real good hockey players in their day. And my mom, it, had she been a boy, she would have been a hockey player. And so she really... Um, encouraged it and uh, 
I loved it. I, 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 I love to play hockey and, I'm, you know, I'm still here today doing it as a 62-year-old. So, you know, it's, it's a game that I'm passionate about. And I, there's so many more things that come from it than just the game itself. So growing up, who was your favorite NHL team? I was a Boston Bruin fan back in the 70s, early 70s. Uh, I love Bobby Orr. I love Phil Esposito, Wayne Cashman, Pye McKenzie, Dallas Smith. Yeah, I, uh, those were teams that uh, uh, Jerry Cheevers that I really admired. And, of course, my dad was a Habs fan, so and my mom was a Bruins fan, so there was a lot of competition in the house when there was a game on. <laughs> What positions did you play growing up? Did you play everything when you were young? You know, mainly I was a forward. I, I didn't really play defense. Uh, I never really played defense at all, to be honest with you. I, I, I seemed to be somebody that wanted to chase the puck. <laughs> and uh, you're not chasing the puck all the time if you're a defenseman. And back in my era, defensemen were more def played more defensively minded. And I wanted to be around the puck more. Um, and obviously today's game is quite a bit different, but... Uh, yeah, I, I played all three forward positions in junior um, and even at university level. So, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed my time, though. How many games in the net? Any? Zero. Zero. Absolutely none. Never, 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 never saw the pads and uh, and never put my hand up to be that uh, to be a goalie. So, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I it's so long ago, but I I don't think we were ever really asked if we wanted to play goal. I mean. We had a big guy. I was only six playing with 10-year-olds, and he was our goalie. And I'm sure if I'd have put those pads on, I wouldn't have been able to stand up. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to put the young guy in that either, right? Yeah, no, they're not. And uh, we, I'll never forget one game in particular. Uh, we went to uh, Creelman for a game. I was playing with Louvan, and uh, we had a local guy. His mom was the... The principal at our at our school in Colfax, uh, his name was Don Mahaffey. He went on to play for the Weyburn Red Wings, <clears throat> and Don that night scored 19 goals, and I had six, and we won 25 to five. And I played against some of my good friends that I later played with in Weyburn, uh, which was really funny. And I always bring it up with Larry Patterson and. Uh, 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 Carnegie uh, as well. Those guys were fun guys when I used to play uh, in Weyburn with them when we joined uh, the Weyburn uh, program. So as you got into your kind of junior age, who who were the guys that you watched on TV that you started to pattern your game after? Who, oh, you know, I I don't really know if I if there was one, Chris. Um, in particular, I I uh, when I got to the late seventies early 80s I was a huge Islander fan Islanders had a lot of um, Saskatchewan players on their team I love Brian Trottier. Um I love Clark Gillies I love those guys I, I loved how they played um, so I think if, if there was a, a players it would be those types of players uh, Mike Bossy I mean I, I didn't have the game obviously that they had but those were the people that I had aspired to be like and, uh, uh, and I was a huge Islander fan when did the WHL become part of your life? How did you find out about being listed? Yeah, whatever? it was really, uh, you know, back in our, uh, my era, you weren't drafted. So uh, you just, you'd get a letter in the mail out of nowhere. And at 14, I got a letter from Medicine Hat Tigers. And um, you're our property. And, you know, we look forward to having you come to a training camp. And uh, it kind of went from there. Um, I went to Medicine Hat a uh, couple years in a row. I had a really good camp. And... Uh, at 17, they, uh, Patty Janelle was the coach there. Kelly Hurdy was their goalie. And uh, uh, Patty said we were going on a, a pre-season pre road trip to the U.S. And he said, make sure you get your passport in order. And uh, I was such a homebody and a farm kid. Uh, that was my first real exposure to being away from home. And uh, I couldn't do it. I, I ended up going back to Weyburn and uh, played junior there. And eventually, they, they, you know, they would call me occasionally just to check in to see if I'd, you know, maybe change my mind. And it, it never happened. Uh, and so at the end of the day, they traded my rights to Brandon. And uh, I ended up, when I was 18, I, I, I got to that point where I, I guess I felt comfortable enough to give it a real serious shot. And I went to Brandon and uh, I played there for a couple of years and uh, and really enjoyed my time in the Western Hockey League. It was, it, it, it was something that... 
you know, if I look back on it now, I probably regret that I didn't try it in Medicine Hat when I had the opportunity. I could have had an earlier start and, and I don't know where it would have led to, but it maybe would have given me that one more year that I really, really could have used. How, how exciting was it to play with your brother and Brandon there? It was really cool to play with brother Mark. Um, uh, yeah, anytime you get the chance to play with your brother, it's it's always really exciting. And Mark didn't stay that year. Uh, uh, he he was a fourth line guy there, and he just uh, you know he's a realist, and he said you know Ken, I'm I'm going to go back home. I'm going to get an opportunity to play there. I, w- I just I want to play more, and you know I kind of know that this is a better fit for me. And I w- so you know that's what he did, um, and he went back to Weyburn and. Uh, uh, as it turned out, uh, as a 20-year-old, I ended up uh, coming back to, to Weyburn and, and finished the last half of the season there. And it was ultimately about that. It was about the opportunity to play with my brother once again. And uh, we had a really good run, lost uh, in Game 7 to uh, Yorkton in the South Sask Final. Uh, three of the seven games went to double overtime, and Game 7 went to double overtime. I broke my nose in that game of the third shift. And uh, so it, it, it was a hard pill to swallow to uh, end your junior career that way, but it was a great run and I had a lot of fun doing it. And I, I don't regret ha- having done it that way, to be quite honest. What was it like to play in the wild, wild west in the early 80s in Brandon? <laughs> it, was cre- in Regina, it, it was crazy. It was. It was. Yeah, you, you've mentioned some places that were not very friendly. Uh, Regina wasn't a team that I cared for a whole lot, and we, there was a lot of, uh, to be quite honest with you, my mom and dad, if they were alive today, would just be, my mom would be absolutely howling to think that that I was coaching the Regina, with the Regina Pats uh, because they were a foe. Um, and a lot of those guys back then, they grew up playing through the Pat organization. They weren't drafted, so they played on the Pat Capitals, the Pat Canadians, and then they went to the, the Pat Blues, and then to the Regina Pats. So I played against those guys all my life, and uh, we had a real dislike for each other. Uh, and, and a lot of them, I, I played against all of them in junior as well. So, um, you know, from Jacques Callender to um, Kelly Livingston to the, I I don't know there's this, there's just a whole host of guys Brian Barga, uh, pa, uh, Billy Ansel, uh, on and on went the list and uh, of course Al Tour, uh, Al and I scrapped a few times it it, it was always uh, it was always a tough place to go Billings you mentioned Billings and uh, we go into we played Billings we brawled Billings twice uh, once in their rink before the game. We had a pre-game warm-up brawl. Uh, we, we got everything settled out. Of course, back in the day, there was no officials on the ice for warm-up, and it got totally out of hand. Uh, and then the game started, and we had a second brawl uh, during the game, and I somehow managed to survive, and I was still in the game. Um, and then we went back to Brandon, and it would have been about a month later, and we had another brawl. So <laughs> it, uh, and in those, in that era, it was not uncommon for the benches to clear. Like, I mean, literally clear. Uh, every guy on the bench was involved in the fracas. So uh, dangerous, uh, I, would, I would have to admit to that. It, it was a lot of fun at the time, but um, you know, the game's changed an awful lot and for the better. There's no question about that. Then you moved on to Brandon. And again, back to Brandon for the university team. Um, what was the decision kind of there to go play hockey there? Well, to be quite honest, the, the university program there was really strong at the time. Uh, Andy Murray was the head coach, and Andy had been um, talking to me quite a bit as I was approaching the end of my junior career. And I had a couple of good friends that were there already playing that I had played in Weyburn with. And, um, you know, so I was, uh, it was that, and, and my mom was encouraging, uh, you know, that I go to some post-secondary education. She was a teacher in her day, and uh, so I thought, yeah, you know what, I, uh, and there was another reason. I had a, a girlfriend there as well, so there was more than one reason to, to go back to Brandon and uh, to go to university, but the team was a really strong team. Unfortunately, I never got a chance to play for Andy, because that year he ended up going to Europe and, and coaching professionally, but... Uh, we still had a really good team, uh, and that year we ended up going to nationals in Moncton, New Brunswick. Uh, we didn't fare as well as we wanted to there, but uh, we ended up losing our first game to uh, uh, a team down east, and 
uh, and then that those kinds of tournaments you can't really afford even a loss to to move on and then we had to play uh, U of S and we lost in a real tight game um, and they ended up winning the national title that year so then we get played against Willie Dujardin <laughs> so it, you know it's kind of funny as you know the clock goes round you start to see these people again in your life later on in life and it's it's kind of a small world in the mm-hmm. hockey world so that kind of set up your kind of next part of life in Brandon didn't it it sure did uh, Chris it, it really did uh, I met my first wife there uh, we had uh, uh, a son about uh, two years into our marriage and uh, and uh, then we divorced after four years and I I, uh, I stayed in the community because I had this boy there and uh, a couple years later I remarried and I'm you know happily married for 35 years with my second wife and we have we had two uh, two other children, a boy and a girl. Um, my son Mark, who ended up coming here and playing as a 20-year-old. Uh, so we raised our family there in Brandon, and uh, of course, when you're doing that, uh, you're getting involved with the kids. So I, I got involved with my kids in baseball and, and hockey were the two sports that I knew the best, and I uh, coached them right from little wee uh, little wee kids, including my daughter. I, I was involved coaching my daughter's hockey and. Uh, uh, two of the kids chose volleyball. Uh, Dustin chose volleyball, my oldest boy, and my daughter ended up choosing volleyball. And so at one point, um, Dustin was playing for our national men's team. Uh, my daughter was playing at the University of Brandon, and, and, and my son Mark was here at the University of Regina playing for the Cougars. So we were busy, you know, right all the way through. And uh, I, I, I got to, to coaching. I coached at every level, uh, Pee Wee, Bantam, and then I coached the U18 program there as well uh, for four years. So yeah, you had some good success there, didn't you? With yeah, I had some really good success. Had some really good teams, and and uh, and in all fairness, a lot of that was as a result of other coaches that had, you know, really developed some really good young talent that that you know then came to our program. Um, I never had the opportunity to win a national champion or to win a provincial championship till I had left. And uh, a couple years later, um, they had to make a coaching change uh, partway through the year and asked me if I'd come back and just pinch hit. And we had a great team that year and uh, actually won the provincial championship. Uh, it was with people like Calder Anderson out of the Moose Jaw and uh, um, Richie, uh, uh, who played for the Weekings after that. And uh, those boys are now playing professionally in Italy. So, yeah, it was a, it was a really fun time and it was a great ride. And... Uh, and then I went back into retirement, and uh, one day I had a, I got a call from Todd Lombard, and Todd said, Ken, I'm in town with uh, John Paddock. We'd like to meet with you. and uh, want to talk to you a bit about scouting. And I said, yeah, sure. I, I had played with Todd uh, in Brandon as a week king, and uh, him and I were real good friends when we played together. And so we sat down at Brown's. Oh, I won't forget it, at uh, Brown's Restaurant in Brandon, and... Uh, they asked me if I might be interested in doing some scouting, mainly in Manitoba, because I was still working full time, and uh, and so that's it. Yeah, I did that for three years, uh, and then that, like I said, when I, if I bring the clock back, I ended up going back and coaching. And after I had done that stint and had, we had won the provincial championship, I, I just I called John up and I said, John, you know what? Uh, I just don't think that. I want to go back to scouting at this point. Uh, the, the, the coaching is just, I, I know that's where my home is. That's where I want to be. I like the, I like being in the game more. If you can't be a player, that's the next best thing. And, and being around the players it really is, for me, the thing that I love the most is to watch kids grow and, uh, um, and, and accomplish things and, and develop their game and, and their personalities. And that, that, that's really what excites me the most. Going back a little bit, you said career. What were you doing other than coaching? Yeah, what well, kind of when I yeah, thanks for asking, Kevin. I um, uh, so when I when I came out of university, I, I was uh, between uh, years of university. I, I worked for the uh, student employment center, the federal government. I was helping students find summer jobs. Just so happened that I got that job as a result of my billet mom in Brandon worked for the federal government. So she led me down the garden path, helped me get this job. And it wasn't a job I would have ever thought I would be in, but it worked out. And 23 years later, I had been in uh, government for 23 years. Uh, I was in employment counseling, helping people find jobs. And we also did a lot of uh, uh, funded people to, co- to college. Uh, 
to get education to be uh, in, in a journeyman uh, status, plumbers and carpenters and that sort of thing. So uh, those were my first 23 years of work and then I was headhunted by the accounting firm MNP and I became their regional um, uh, human resources manager and I did that for 15 years in Brannon and uh, traveled around southern Manitoba to all of our different offices and uh, uh, it was quite a change for me going from having lived 23 years in government to private sector and it was it was fantastic I loved it uh, MNP was great to me it was a great job and uh, it was a people job and and that fit who I'd become I guess over time so after you were finished playing at Brandon um, you got into some senior hockey didn't you I sure did <laughs> you guys have done your homework I uh, yes I, I, I played the uh, Senior hockey with a team called the Brandon Sportsman, right at, right there in in, uh, in Brandon, and uh, we played in the Southwest Hockey League initially for a few years, and then uh, we were pretty strong. And of course, having the access to players right in the city, um, you know, we 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 were connecting with other university players that we had played together with, et cetera, et cetera. So. Uh, eventually, the league had said, "Okay, you guys are you guys are out because we just can't have you guys in the league any longer." So we joined uh, um, uh, Paul Murray from Murray Chevaux's, uh, uh got some big sponsorship from Pepsi, and we joined what we called the Cash League, and it was with two teams out of Winnipeg: St. Boniface Mohawks and the St. James Canadians, and the Thunder Bay Twins. And we had a little four-team league, and uh, and that team whoever won that league would represent the league at the Allen Cup and so that was my first introduction to the Allen Cup to be honest with you and uh, so I played in that we I never did our team never in Brandon managed to win the league but uh, I got picked up by St. Boniface to play in the Allen Cup in Thunder Bay and uh, one of my old buddies Bruce Thompson who now lives here he was the coach of the Regina Cougars got picked up he was on our team in Brandon. He got picked up by Thunder Bay. He scored the tying goal and the winning goal uh, to beat us 3-2 in Thunder Bay. So <laughs> it, it was quite a ride, but it was a great experience. And uh, so my coaching led me to um, coaching a, a, a senior team uh, at the Allen Cup out of uh, Ildeshane, Manitoba. And it was a kind of a unique story just in that my brother-in-law, Kelly Glow, who I'd played with here, uh, played with in Brandon, uh, had just retired from professional hockey in Europe, and uh, they were after him to, to play with them, and they wanted him to be the coach and player, and, and uh, he said, no, I, I'll play, but I got a guy that you can ask to be the coach, and I had no idea that this was going on. Next thing you know, my phone rings and there, Kelly's saying, you, you're going to say yes to this? <laughs> or I'm not doing yeah, it. So, so I don't have to. Right? Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. And uh, so one thing led to another and uh, uh, we went on this crazy little spring run. Uh, one Manitoba uh, played Lloyd Minister in a best of five, all in their rank. Game after game, it's a best of five and you play five games in five nights if that's how it has to go. And uh, fortunately enough, we were pretty good and we won that series in three straight and uh, went to the Allen Cup in Dundas, Ontario and had just one heck of an experience there. Uh, got to coach Patty Floon, Craig Geeky, um, uh, Connor Geeky's dad was on our squad. Uh, we, we had a really good team and, and Kelly, of course, uh, him and uh, he, he was always uh, uh, scoring goals in a uh, high school goal scorer in the Western Hockey League yeah. so we had a we had a real good team uh, we ended up uh, beating an Alberta team in the double overtime and it was a, Kelly scored uh, set up by Pat Falloon so the two pro guys got it done for us but uh, it was a lot of fun um, and then as a result back in that era uh, if you won the Allen Cup you got to represent Canada at a international tournament of some kind obviously lower level um, but uh, so we went to uh, Japan the following February and uh, for the most part we had all of our team but we didn't have everyone unfortunately but uh, yeah and uh, we didn't fare as well as we'd wanted to but your senior hockey players we were playing professional European teams and uh, Japan's national team so but we played in uh, Nagano uh, where the Olympics had been held it was it was in the 
incredible experience, just a really incredible experience. And my brother-in-law, Kelly, had actually played a year in, in Tokyo, and so he took me on the tour. We went all over the place, uh, visited where he had, and his family had lived. Uh, we played a game against uh, a university team in his home rink uh, leading up to the tournament. So it was, uh, it was pretty, pretty interesting and pretty exciting time. Do you ever think hockey would take you to Japan? <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, Chris, I, I, hockey has done so many things for me over the years. It's, and the places that I've got to see and go um, through hockey, um, you know, my university career, same thing. You know, you're going to places, Flagstaff, Arizona, went to Switzerland. Uh, we went on a tour that Andy Murray set up for us. And uh, um, those are things that you just, you really treasure. And now you look back and you go, wow, I, I, I can't believe that I had all, had all these opportunities. Senior hockey, like it, it's, it seems to be a Western Canadian thing. Like it's not as big down in Ontario, even though, it's the Allen Cup is, seems to go down to Ontario a lot. It's like Dundas is obviously a really yes. strong team, but it really seems to be a prairie thing, and like, and it's still hanging on. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely, it is. Uh, it really is a, a, a Western Canada thing. Um, there's lots of senior hockey in Alberta. There's lots of senior hockey here, obviously, in this area, and there's lots of senior hockey in Manitoba. I'm quite familiar with it. Um, you know that uh, southeastern part of uh, uh, that Winnipeg area. Uh, even southwestern uh, Manitoba, there's lots of senior hockey goes on. And uh, in those small towns, it's really important for those towns to have those programs because the local people support it. The kids go to the rink and they find their idol in some senior hockey player. And, uh, you know, it's, re it's, really, it's really fun to watch and it's important, I think, for, for rural western Canada. It's, it really is. Uh, my son, Mark... Uh, after he graduated from University of Regina, played, I think it was about seven years in Grenfell and just had the time of his life, you know. So, and I kept telling him, you're going to enjoy senior hockey as much or more than all of the other hockey you've played, all the university and all the Western Hockey League stuff you've done. Because these are your buddies now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can have a couple of pops after and you're, you're just going to enjoy what you're doing. And, and, uh, yeah, and he's always treasured that since. Speaking of your son. What was it like for him to be traded for Brandon to Regina? How did you feel? Were well, you you, you, that's a really good question. It, it, it was difficult, to be honest with you, as parents, because we were going through it knowing that he was a 20-year-old and he wasn't guaranteed a job. Um, and Mark was, uh, and he would admit, he was a journeyman player. So it was going to be tough. And, of course, Kelly McCrimmon was the coach and GM at the time. And Kelly's a personal friend of mine. Um, and we played together. So... Um, you know, when the decision came down, it, it was a rough September, to be quite honest with you. But we were just happy for Mark that he uh, he could continue his uh, his career. And we, we always thank Kelly a lot that he found a landing spot for Mark. And it happened to be Regina. And Mark was uh, happy that he didn't have to go to Prince George or somebody uh, somewhere where it was, you know, a long ways from home at that point. He wasn't interested in that. Uh, he had already experienced that as a younger Western League player in Kamloops and uh, so being here in Regina was great for Mark, um, and uh, when he played his year, they, they weren't the best team on, on the planet, but um, he made some real good friends here, and uh, you know, then the university had a hockey program here. Brandon, by that point, had no hockey program, and so it was just, it was a good fit for Mark to stay here. He met his wife here, and uh, you know, he's got his career here now, and uh, yeah, he's enjoying his life. Nice. Good. Did you ever get to play with Ron Hextel? I did play with Ron just he, briefly. Yes, era. yeah. In, uh, uh, Ron, Ron was 16, and I would have been a 20-year-old. And uh, yes, so the answer is yes. I played with Hexy, and he was a nutcase. <laughs> even, when, when he, even when he was even when he was 16, he had that you know chip on his shoulder. And and I know a lot of his family, uh, his cousins, and. Uh, uh, his his parents and uh, but yeah he 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 lived by the name the Hextall name was synonymous to to the area and uh, yeah he was an interesting he was an interesting kid no question and went uh, a fierce fierce competitor awesome yeah like w there's videos of Regina Brandon with him and uh, oh yeah some very there's some very interesting uh, absolutely I wasn't in some of those yeah. games because I was already done but yeah. uh, oh man they were some pretty wild times. The wild, wild west. The wild, wild west.
all you got. Then. That's everything. Yeah, I know. I uh, appreciate you coming on and yeah. telling yeah. us your story. Us. Thanks, guys. Uh, I I can go on forever. So <laughs> no, uh, this fine. has been enjoyable. Yeah, I really awesome. appreciate it. Yeah, no Thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. All right, and then yeah, so that's uh, that's all for tonight, and hopefully yeah, uh, you enjoyed that interview. For sure. Special thanks to Ken Schneider if he listens. Thanks to the, for the interview. Thanks to the Pats for letting us do this stuff. So yeah, no, Dante seems really, really pleased with what we're doing there. So he he's he's enjoying it. So that's thanks to him for for sure, hundred percent. So all right, well, with that, well, see you at the rink on Friday. Have a good night, folks. Take it easy.